how can the ego be surrendered to God? So, all right, the so first is to become acquainted. What is the ego? It's the persistence of the animal instinct, but now elaborated through mind, the intellect, and given authenticity by the mutual agreement of society. All right. The reason I stay with current events, for many years I ignored current events. I didn't read a newspaper or listen to radio for years and years. <clears throat> Somebody did a make wrong about it and I bought it. I let go of the make wrong about mm, paying attention to the world. That make wrong is a misinterpretation of the calibrated level of 700, where let's say Ramana Maharshi says, there's no point in trying to change the world because the world that you see doesn't exist which is true within a certain context. Within another context, the world is, an extreme, is, is the drama of the ego. I find it fascinating because what you see is every ego mechanism played out on a grand stage. So if you want to understand your ego, what you try to do is comprehend what goes on in the world and see it in terms of the ego and you under, then understand yourself. And you understand the fallacy of the many positions that uh, pertain and are popularized in society. You, you see right through the fallacy in a way that is expressible through languaging. From the nonlinear domain, you see the idiocy of it. You don't see it as idiocy, but you see beyond it but you can't explain it. So it takes years to learn how to re-language things in a fluent way to explain that which is obvious so that it makes sense to the intellect. So being a student of the world then, um, you're really a student of the ego. So letting go wanting to change it in the world comes about as a, as a willingness to want, letting, letting it go within yourself and vice versa. Forgiving the world and forgiving yourself are one and the same thing because the world is just a projection of the ego. You might say, well, it's not my ego. Well, it's the collective ego. So you might as well take on the collective ego and do everybody a favor, you know? <laughs> well, the people haven't gotten around to surrender their ego, you surrender it for them. And they get jacks for, they get, they get jacks for openers. They get into heaven right off the bat. And you did it for them. Well, we say, you know, we say that in a jocular fashion, but that's a fact. That every step you take forward spiritually benefits all of mankind. One person that you forgive already affects the consciousness level of all of mankind. That's so, resist. Therefore, everyone is a savior, potential savior, resist. Everyone is a potential savior. Each and every one of us, as we forgive that one person that we hated, we could chop them in small pieces and flush them <laughs> because they deserve it. You can't pretend they didn't deserve it, and you can't pretend they didn't do it. It's a fact they did, and they probably do deserve it. But despite that, you still forgive them. That's where the jump is. All right, so that comes out of the willingness. The intention, then, to make these moves comes about from... First of all, it comes about through the heart. I usually don't talk about the heart because it makes the uh, lecture very short. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you bring up the heart, goodbye. Uh, I, I sit on the heart. Uh, I also have to sit on the mind. Uh, but the mind is easier to sit on than the heart. But uh, to keep the mind functioning in turn, in language incomprehensible to the world took a great deal of effort, took me many years. When the heart comes up, so all right. You see, the willingness to make these steps comes from the heart. It's because of the innate love of God you're willing to surrender the hatred. You understand? You don't do it because you intellectually understand that it's a necessary step to reach enlightenment. 
The willingness to surrender everything to God, including one's justified hatreds, is strong enough that brings you to the willingness to surrender them. <laughs>